Hiya, it's Pat Hopper again, and I'm still getting questions about how to shade, so I thought I would come to you with another video. I know it's been a while since I've made a video, I apologize for that. I'm still, uh, I have a few ideas of videos in my head, but I need a tripod for those, and it's on my wish list, so let's see if uh, that wish can come true in the future. Anyway, here I am going to show you how to shade. This is a picture from Dover Publications. It's kind of cute, and I'm doing it for a theme challenge for my Forest City Coloring Addicts. I'll post a link in um, the description. And the theme is lots of green, so I'm going to do this with lots of green, and I thought I would sh that's a perfect opportunity to show you how to shade. So here we go. Watch and enjoy. Oh, I am using uh, for the middle Crayola Yellow Green. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see that or not. Crayola Yellow Green. And this is going to be the center of the leaf. I like to color, <clears throat> if I'm coloring a large page like this, I like to do all the similar areas at once. So I'm going to lay down all the yellow green. First, I want that to be in the center of the leaf. And then for the outer edge of the leaf, I'm going to use Crayola colored pencil in green, just the plain ordinary green. Okay, and then I'm just going to go around the parts that the yellow green aren't in. And when you use two colors like this, that are in the same shade family and kind of lay them beside each other and you get a shading effect. Like that. I know that there's products out on the market and you can buy blending pencils and you can use Vaseline or solvents, lots of things like that on the market, but really I want to, um, I color for relaxation and I don't want <clears throat> to, excuse me, I don't want to be stressed out about what I can or cannot afford, so I like to use uh, products that are well within my budget and my budget is almost next to nil <laughs> um so i use like you'll notice that my go-to uh pencil crayons are the crayola brand um these are you get these at any big box store these your kids probably have these you can use these and still make really really nice pages you don't have to spend an arm and a leg on artistic colored pencils to make a pretty page. I do have other, I do have Prismacolors, um, but my go-to's are the Crayola, because I want to show people that uh, it really doesn't matter how much you spend on your colored pencils, you can still get shading and blending um, and everything like that going on with just your basic store-bought items. You don't have to go to an art store, to a big box store. Maybe, as I said, maybe your kids even have some Crayola colored pencils. <clears throat> That's all you do. No solvents, 
no blending pencils, nothing like that was used. Just two pencil crayons side by each. And then I'm, I'm going to keep on going. And because, uh, as I said, this uh, coloring theme challenge is lots of green. So I'm going to use lots of shades of green in this image. I probably won't be able to film all of it. Um, I'm not using a video camera that I can pause and uh, do stuff like that. I'm using my uh, Kodak camera to film this and it doesn't have a pause feature. So I want to be able to show you the entire image from start to finish. But if you follow me on Instagram, I will post the finished picture in there. But I'm, I hope that, hello Kiki, <laughs> I hope that you can uh, get a gist of what's going on. I really am in need of some new uh, colored pencils. I'll have to make sure that that gets remedied very soon because they're getting rather small. And uh, they've been around forever, these ones. I've had them in my arsenal for quite some time, so they're almost nubs now. And some of my Prisma colors, my Prisma colors have been dropped so many times that some of them, the lead, if you can call it a lead, down in the center of the color pencil is broken, so you have to sharpen it and sharpen it and sharpen it. And that makes me sad to watch the pencil get smaller and smaller. I know a lot of other channels have uh, wish lists and things like that. and uh, Their Amazon wish lists connected to their um, channel and they have like tip jars and things like that. Uh, I really don't want to have to get into all of that. I'm not here to take your money. <clears throat> I want to show you how to color with inexpensive items and still have a very nice page. As I said, you don't even need to purchase books really. This is um, a free sample from Dover Publications and I'll post their information uh, in the description as well. If you subscribe to them they will send you um, free sample pages right in your inbox. So can't get any more reasonably priced than free. Free is my favorite price. How about you? This is coming along nicely. I kind of like it. <clears throat> I don't know whether this is a flower or a leaf, um, but the theme is lots of green, so I'm going to do a green. That's the thing about coloring, right? You're the boss of what goes where. Think outside the box a little bit, and there's no reason why you can't have a pink owl or a 
purple peacock if those are the colors you want to use on that particular day then go ahead oh i want to do this circular thing i want to show you how i do this i've done this a few times <clears throat> this technique so what i do is add a little bit of the dark I'll show you. This is a. I add the darkest color. And I'm not going to stop in a straight line. I want it to kind of be jaggedy. You'll see what I'm doing. It'll all make sense. Then I'm going to take the yellow green and go in the other areas that weren't colored. And then this uh, circular part gets shaded as well. It'll look like lots of shading and stuff was done. And really, it's. I really didn't. I really didn't sweat about it. I just kind of laid down two colors next to each other. And, uh. Until they look nice. And I think I'm going to grab another color, another shade of green for these things. Oh, I forgot a center. Better do him. And I forgot another center. <laughs> How did I do that? I'm talking when I should be coloring. So I'm going to go around the edge here of this. But I'll fill it in with another color. Then I'll grab another green, I think. Or maybe I'll do like a bluish green in there to show you that you don't really need to even um, have two shades in the same color family, you can do uh, colors from different areas and it'll work as well for your shading. You just layer it on little bit by little bit. Right, and your first little layer is not going to be, um, you know, it kind of looks sloppy, doesn't it? Like if someone was uh, tuning in and just catching this part, they'd be like, what on earth is she doing? That looks so sloppy. But you'll see that it all works. Okay, now let me get another color, because I want to um, show you that you can use two separate colors, side by side, little tiny strokes, and it will blend in nicely. It really will. You just have to 
trust the design of the material. They're meant to be used together. So what do I want? I would like orange. <clears throat> what do I have? I have salmon. Not the fish. <laughs> do I want to use salmon? I don't know if I want to use salmon. I have my heart set on orange and uh, it's really deep down inside. Here, I'll show you. This is my pencil case. And these are all my Crayola colored pencils. You can see these are really what I use. I know they don't pay me to use their product. This is uh, just what I like. So this is what I use. And there's my orange. Of course the one I want is way down at the bottom. Isn't that the way it goes? Okay. So I want to show you that you can use colors that are not even in the same color family and lay them down beside each other and they'll work together too. Just kind of go in little circles. in and around until the whole area is colored in. I've never seen an orange flower with green trim, but as I said, when you're coloring, you're the boss of your page, so if that's what you want, go for it. You got to try not to be so literal when you're doing your adult coloring pages. That'll just make you mental and really you're trying to do this for relaxation and joy, not for stress. So don't, don't pre-plan your coloring. Uh, don't pick your palette in advance or anything like that. Um, I sort of did for this image because I knew I wanted it to be green to fit the theme, but uh, I'm not going to um, pre-plan every step of it. I just knew I wanted green. Um, but for the rest of it, I'll just pick and choose as I go along. This is kind of cool. This little, these bumblebees are liking this uh, orange and green flower. They don't care that this isn't seen in nature. <laughs> I make my own nature. If you are on Instagram, uh, tag search some images um, of your favorite coloring book. Like if you just purchased, uh, I just purchased Enchanted Garden. Is that what it's called? No. Secret Garden Enchanted Forest. I just purchased Enchanted Forest. Um, I've wanted that book for a long time, but every time I went to purchase it, they were all sold out and uh, I just recently found a copy at Costco so I snatched that up and uh, if you're on Instagram and, and you really should uh, use Instagram for more things than selfies you can go on there and you can tag search uh, the book that you, the current book that you're coloring in and use 
the images that pop up as inspiration and you'll see that uh... oh I even forgot wow how did that happen um, you'll see that people really do think outside the box when they're coloring and that's the key you'll see like blue and fuchsia owls and uh, one of my favorite peacock pages of the Milly Morado peacock on uh, Instagram. I saw it on Instagram. They did their peacock in w with shades of red and it's breathtaking. They probably just felt like using red that day. Maybe they were also in a theme challenge and the theme challenge was red and they wanted the peacock and went, huh, I wonder if I can make that work. And it did. It, it worked and it's beautiful. So, hey, I really like that. That's kind of cool, the green and the orange together. Hmm. Glad I thought of that. <laughs> um, but I'm thinking this flower here, what color should this one be? Um, da -da -da -da. Purple? Did I hear you say purple? Of course you said purple. Okay, I'll we'll do it purple. And I'm going to use uh, Crayola Plum. I think I'll leave the center as white. Uh, that also acts as a little bit of shading. You can just kind of go around the edge like this and leave uh, white bits. Not every inch of your page has to be covered in color. It's kind of cute, isn't it? I like it. Hello, Mr. Bumblebee. How are you? I need yellow for the bumblebee. Hmm. How am I going to find that? Oh, here he is. Here's a yellow. Crayola. Yellow. And I think this is a bumblebee. He'll be a bumblebee. So let me do them all yellow. And let me get the black. And do his little stripes. I want his bum to be black. And his head has to be black, of course. Hmm. He's kind of cute. And for his wings, I think I'll go and I'll add some metallic blue. Crayola metallic blue. And kind of make his wings pop out from the page a little bit by just going around the edge of them like that. So, there's uh, 25 minutes of me coloring. 
and I can see that I completely forgot a flower right here. So let me do that while you're watching. <laughs> I'm uh, not paying attention to where I'm coming. I'm paying more attention to the video. I'll probably have to advance or fast forward or whatever that term is. Because um, I'm not sure how long uh, my channel allows videos to be. The, the more subscribers you have on your YouTube channel, I notice, um, the more features they give you. So I think uh, I don't have that many subscribers, like 16 subscribers, I think. So I think I can only post like 10 minute videos or something like that, not even. Um, so this will have to be fast forwarded in spots. I don't know how that's going to work with me talking all the way through it, <laughs> but we'll figure it out. Okay, did I get all of that part of the page? Yes, I did. Okay, so follow me on Instagram so that you can see the finished product. Happy coloring.